Everyone, welcome my good friend Andy here. It's been a long time, it, you know. We've been waiting to do this for a long time now. Yeah, been uh, been listening a lot. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, dude, you want to be like this. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You can move it however way you want to move it. That's but again, there. yeah, this is Andy, my good friend. You know, we met through mutual friends. Um, my One of my best friend Thomas's uh, older brother. Yeah, yeah, through the Lindgrens. It's through the Lindgrens, and that's... Second family. Yeah, our second families uh, combined. So, um, I was talking to you about what podcasts you listen to, and so, are, would you say you listen to more podcasts than music lately? Because I know podcasts, are, it feels like they're kind of, they're slowly migrating into people's lives. I don't know, it's, it's kind of like cyclical, you know, just because I think when, when I was in college and I was too cheap to pay for Spotify, Yeah, like, I would only listen to podcasts, like, you know, eating up every Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think in the beginning it was mostly just Joe Rogan, um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, I started making money, started paying for Spotify, so I kind of got away from it. But, I mean, I can only listen to the same song so many times. It's kind of nice to, to hear something different. I got, you know, it's kind of hard to listen to them at work. You get mm-hmm. a little distracted. But um, now, long drives and stuff, I just, you know, flip on a podcast. Yeah. the uh, yeah, I got all excited when I heard you talking about Jocko on one of yours. Yeah. Um, it's kind of kind of cool every time you meet somebody that listens to him. Yeah. It's kind of a, seem, you know, it's kind of a cool thing to relate to people about. Mm-hmm. He's one of those guys where you just feel like less, I mean, not less of a man when you listen to him, but you're like, fuck, man, I could be grinding a little bit harder, you know? Dude, there's there's times <laughs> when it's like you're being lazy and you're like, dude, I can't listen to Jocko right yeah. now. Like, it make me feel too bad. Yeah. Like, I have all of his books, including uh, Discipline Equals Freedom. Uh, yeah, I, I read that, but I had to give it back to the library before I came here. Dude, yeah, I mean, there's no better way to make yourself feel like, I don't know, I don't want to say worthless, but... That, like you said, that you could be doing more than that book. Yeah. Like, the the first page, what is it? It's like, there's only one way, the way of discipline, and I'm sitting there eating a fucking cinnamon roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to close it. And I mean, I think he, he has a good way with, um, when I was first going through, like, a breakup, and I was all heartbroken, right? And, like, I looked up Jocko's podcast because I knew he was kind of, like, one of those guys that, like, kind of motivates you. And I listened to it, and his first, the opening, like, the first two seconds of the video was, get over it. You know, and I was like, you know, it was it was kind of humbling and it was nice to see like, wow, like, you know, someone is out here actually thinking of it. And also, you know, he just has really good points. And I like how he's he brings in his ideas to things, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, th- I think, you know, there's so many motivational speakers out there like, you know, a lot of people are into Tony Robbins or Gary V. Mm-hmm. And it, it always those guys feel really I mean, if it works or people get on them. Mm-hmm. But at least for me, you know, it always feels sort of insincere. You know, it's just like canned motivational speak yeah. with some F-bombs thrown in. But like, you know, if you follow Jocko on Instagram or whatever, you know, he's he lives that life and it's, you know, it's fucking impressive. Yeah. You know, I think there's probably so few people in the world that are capable of that, you know, mm-hmm. to that level. But you, like you were saying, man, it's just like it makes you think every time, like, you know, can I just work a little bit harder? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. You know, if you do homework, bang out one more problem or, mm-hmm. you know, run, you know, one more lap or something. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's different, you know, it's, uh, it's a different way to live. I would definitely classify jo- Jocko as the one more guy. Like he's the yeah. one more in everything, you know, you could do a little bit more. And that's what I try to do, you know, with everything. But like, like I was telling you, Theo Vaughn, you also listen to Theo Vaughn. He's fucking funny as hell. Yeah. And, you know, I like to model my podcast about both of theirs, you know, and Joe Rogan's as well, because he's he's definitely the king of pod. He's the prince of, you know, or the king of podcasting right now. And he's definitely a big influence of why I started to do this, um, because it just looks like it's in a lot of people, too, when they see podcasting, they think it's like all really easy and stuff. But like, you know, it's there's some hardships for it. There isn't. It's not all fun. But I fucking love every second of it. But um, yeah. So what what else do you what else are you doing? What are you up to? What should the people know about you that don't know you? Well, um, just change jobs mm-hmm. again. Um, kind of feels shitty to say again, but uh, just working working too much. Um, at my previous company, mm-hmm. um, was working nights and I was like you know fourteen to sixteen hours a night and. Freaking falling asleep at the wheel on the way home every morning. It's just, uh, fuck, that's a couldn't do it, man. And it, you know, and it's I was getting paid pretty well, but it's just it was started to get unsafe. Um, you know, one of my goals eventually, um, well, me and my girlfriend, um, we'd like to move to Spokane. So I actually 
um, got on with a company that's in Spokane that's got a job in Bellevue right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a light rail job. So I'll be there for um, probably about the next four years, and then hopefully after that I'll be able to move over over here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, graduated from WSU in 2017 with a CM degree. Mm-hmm. Um, from there I went to Texas. Uh, that was a interesting experience, but it was fun. Um, how was how was it interesting? <laughs> what was interesting about Texas? I I mean, I guess for interesting from my perspective, you kind of have to start. Um, I took I took a fifth year, and so I was here by myself. Mm-hmm. My last year, all my friends were gone, and uh, the girlfriend I had at the time had taken a job with Amazon in Texas, and so we were doing the long distance thing, and then. Uh, right after Christmas break, um, my fifth year, she broke up with me. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's like every time you talk about your, your breakup on here, it's mm-hmm. like pretty relatable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fucking hard, man. But uh, I had already – I had taken a job with a company um, in San Antonio. Um, and I was like, well, fuck it. You know, I already got this job. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to go give it a try. Um, so, yeah, me and me and Connor loaded up my truck and um, – made a made it in three days from from here to austin um and it was uh yeah it was crazy we uh you know he was on vacation so he had a good time but like nothing fucking went right on that trip for me like there was i just bought my truck and um when we were in vegas ended up my mom called me i had some problem with my truck loan and um somehow they were going to change my auto loan to a personal loan which is like 25 percent interest jesus yeah um and then yeah we had we had a good time in vegas but then we went to uh to tucson Mm -hmm. and i had actually gotten a hotel in like the bad part of town it was i mean that was really sketchy um and then we got to austin um and i i went to to go sign my papers and uh they told me that I was actually going to be working out about halfway between Austin and college station. Um, little town called Lexington, which is actually kind of a cool place. Really? Yeah. If you ever, if you ever have time to spend in Texas, definitely drive from, from Austin to Houston. Mm -hmm. There's some cool little communities out there, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I had, before I moved there, I had gotten an apartment in, uh, or, you know, did the stuff for an apartment in San Marcos, which is, about halfway, a little less than halfway between uh, Austin and San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got there to the office in San Antonio, and he goes, uh, yeah, you know, you're going to be working all the way out in Lexington. I'm like, fucking shit, you know, I can't, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's way too far away from from San Marcos. So I ended up getting a place in the north side of Austin. Um, You know, I just went on Google Maps, typed in apartments in north Austin. The fucking first one I found, I just signed. Yeah. Which is crappy because I paid way too much money, you know. Um, it's kind of you know, I think everybody has like their oh I should have listened to my dad moment, and that was that was that one because um, my dad's suggestion was that yeah so, um, like I said he he's like yeah get an Airbnb you know, you know try the city try the suburb you mm-hmm. know whatever and I was like nah you know I'm just gonna do what I what I think is best, mm-hmm. and I mean in in my defense I guess you know I was I was freaking out and I was so I was so stressed my ex-girlfriend was fucking with my mind and um you know kind of stringing me along a little bit um and uh so i ended up getting the apartment it was a nice apartment but you know i looked back later and it's like i could have gotten like a a place in austin with roommates for like 600 bucks a month you know i was paying over a thousand i think i was paying like almost 1200 bucks a month for my apartment um and i didn't have a ton of money um but you know it's like hindsight's twenty twenty, whatever yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was listening to that podcast you did where you were talking about uh uh codependency. Yeah. And that's I mean that was super relatable for me um in that situation just because it's like yeah, and I look back on it and it's like you can I could pick out like all the points where in that relationship where it's like you know it's not right. Yeah. You know, but then but at the time you get you know you put your blinders on and um you know, it's, um, you know, I can, I, you can psychoanalyze yourself at every turn, but I guess at the same time, it's like, what, you know, what you, you look back and I wonder what, it, what prevented me from just pulling the plug and doing the right thing because 
you, like I said, you look back and you know, and you, and then you realize you, you know, you knew. Yeah. You know, in the time. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost scary that you knew, but you didn't act on it. Yeah. You know, and it's weird because I, I'm in that same situation. I was like, wow, I, there's stuff going wrong and I'm still just ignoring it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, so we might call it blissfully naive or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I I have a tendency to be pretty hard on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a stupid shit like that. Um, you know, I guess, you know, when you're, when you're young, you, you do, you do weird stuff and you think, you know, every, every problem is the end of the world. Um, but yeah, ended up, uh, ended up dating another girl in Texas for a little while. That was fun. She's a good girl. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, uh, just, I got homesick and, um, you know, I had, I had a really good job there actually with a really good company. Um, and if, if they worked up here, I would have, you know, would have stayed with them. I just, they don't, they only work really in, yeah. in the South. Um, but yeah, decided to, uh, to come back, um, went to work for a, uh, actually a Canadian company, um, mm-hmm. that had an office in Bellevue or has an office in Bellevue that, uh, one of my good friends from from school also worked for, um, and he actually ended up getting uh, getting let go shortly after that. Um, I just, and that was that was kind of a f- kind of opened my eyes to the the corporate world a little bit because he he kind of got blamed for something that was uh, um, it was somebody else's fault actually, you know, and it's kind of uh, you know, it's kind of the, what's the, you know, doc, the, the dichotomy, you know, yeah. Jock always talks about with extreme ownership. It's like at some point, you know, it's kind of, you want to take extreme ownership for sure. But at the same time, like, you know, he took ownership for something and it ended up getting him fucked, getting him fired. And, yeah. uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know the entire situation, but, uh, it was just kind of shitty cause it was, you know, it's something that. Did you know the it cost the company money? Um, ended up having to do a bunch of rework, but um, yeah, it was it wasn't really anybody's fault. If mm-hmm. anything, it was the laborers who were doing it. It was their fault. But you know, whatever. You know, it's at the he ended up taking the taking the hit, and uh, you know, so I ended up there by myself. You know, yeah, and uh, was on two really really tough jobs. Um, in the summer of 2018, I worked, uh, over 20 straight days, three separate times. Um, always like 12 or 14 hours yeah. a day. So what do you, so interrupt like for people who don't are unclear, what do you do? Oh, I, uh, I work in construction. Okay. Um, I, uh, I spent most of the last two years as what's called a field engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, so really it's mostly just, uh, helping out the project manager in the office and then you help out the superintendent in the field. Okay. And you kind of, I mean, it's just kind of doing a lot of everything. So you're pretty hands-on, would you say 60% hands-on? Yeah, I would say depending on the project, most of my projects have been about 70% field, 30% office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't, I don't labor. Um, mm-hmm. I'll help out, which, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes. You, yeah. There's a lot to be learned in that, you know, doing labor. Um, so I like to try to, um, try to help out or try to run equipment when I can. Um, but I think, uh, I'm trying to think I went from, I did, uh, a job up in Granite Falls on mm. highway 92. Um, just doing a fish passage and that had, a had a three week full closure mm. or excuse me, two week full closure. And then they shipped me up to white pass and did another, basically the same project up on white pass. And, uh, that was a three week closure and that job ran 24 yeah. seven. Uh, yeah. Luckily I was on the day shift, but still it was, uh, um, you know, show up at five and it's 5 AM. And then I'd leave, leave there by like 6 PM, Fuck. leave the job site. And then it was about an hour back into Yakima where they were putting us up, you know, and then I eat dinner and take a shower and stuff. And so it was, and go to bed and ten, then yeah, wake up 10 and do it again. Yeah. For, for three weeks. Um, God, yeah, that was brutal. And then I got, 
sent up to Mount Vernon um, on a panel replacement job. So, you know, if you were stuck in traffic in Stanwood or Mount Vernon the last year, I apologize. Um, uh, that, like I said, it's it whenever you work on the freeway, it's all night work. Yeah. And so I was just doing, yeah, night work with the exception of uh, January and February. We were in a winter shutdown um, from October to the beginning of August when I left that company. Um, I was working nights. Yeah. Just freaking, that's brutal, man. So is that big ass light on the freeway? Is that shit hot? No, no, it's it's just like it's like a fluorescent. It doesn't bring you like a hot off hot light off. Well, I guess to me, like you know, so some people like the rest of the world. Some people are going to LED lights. Yeah, and uh, um, there's there's a light called a balloon light, mm-hmm. which most people use for construction these days, because um, there's no you know like direct glare. But uh, for whatever reason, you can't use those on the freeway. Huh. Yeah. So no, those are those old shitty light plants yeah um but uh yeah so august 8th was my last day there um this last august we just yeah had, or the august we're in i should say. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so you know i felt i felt bad leaving i don't i don't want to be one of those guys that hops around from from company to company but at the same time i kind of have to look out for myself and um you know trying to find the best fit do you feel like that's like a thing that's kind of a thing going on lately in the job in the job force like you know like in the 60s like the boomers and stuff they stayed at a job for 40 years they're Mm -hmm. like this is what i'm gonna do i'm staying here and i'm here do you think that's like changing nowadays a lot easier to find new jobs and it's like you know what i mean because back then it was like hey i'm I'm hanging on to this job packing this shit Mm -hmm. or whatever i'm doing but now it's like hey like like you said i gotta look out for myself like you know do you think that's more of a common theme nowadays? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, my dad um, has more or less worked for Comcast since he graduated from high school. I mean, he started out with a company called TCI, and there's been some mergers and some acquisitions. Yeah. So he's worked for Comcast since Comcast acquired the company he worked for. But, uh, you know, and that's something I really admire. But I think I read something now that uh, the average time in a job is like two and a half years. Yeah. If that now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a weird thing because it's, everybody's always talking about how, at least in construction, how they're having a really hard time finding qualified people. Um, I guess my dad was telling me that about his industry as well. Um, but it's, it's kind of weird because they're always talking about, we have so many new jobs, so many new jobs, and there's nobody to fill them. Um, you know, like, it's like, I think me and me and Connor were talking about it yesterday, like, you know, not everybody is meant to go to college. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't hurt yourself necessarily by going to college. You know, there's a lot to be said for having an education. Um, but I think a lot of people come come to college and don't know what they want to do, and they get a degree that... They don't. I, I hate to say the word worthless because, you know, I don't think education is necessarily worthless, but a degree in that leads to a field that they're really not interested in you know, and then there's, you know, like construction, there's, we have a really hard time finding good laborers, you know, yeah. good masons, good carpenters, operators stick around for a while because they got a good gig. Um, but it, I mean, it's hard work, but they make a lot of money and, yeah. um, you know, there's, it's becoming less common, but a lot, you know, um, some guys that start on that field do end up in, in the office and being project managers or superintendents or, um, you know, the, the construction manager on the, you know, I'm on a nearly billion dollar job now. And the construction manager started out as a Mason, Jesus. you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty impressive, you know, it's, so it's kind of, I, like I said, I think that's becoming less and less common, but it's not impossible. I think, and, oh yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say like, you know, like I said, just, I think a lot of people think that, that college is the only, only way to to have a good life. And, um, I think it's, i would be good. It's good for people to explore other, other avenues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My brother actually, he, I don't know if he's thinking about college, but he's more of a tech guy, kind of like Connor is, you know, how he's, he's thinking about like tech school and like mm-hmm. stuff like that. And there's definitely ways to make a living than going to a four year, you know? And the thing is like, I, I'm a big fan of education too. And I'm at Wazoo now, 
But what I think college, and I've talked to George about this a long time ago, a degree is a degree, but what it really shows is that you were committed to something for four years. And that's basically what it's showing yeah. to your employers. Like, you know, yes, it, you know, you have your fancy label on it, but it also says, hey, this guy is able to stay committed to something and he's willing to put in the work, you know, and that's mm. pretty cool to see. But like you said, there's some people who go into it they're like, I don't even know what I want to do for four years. It's like, hey, you should, you know, probably have a little bit of an idea, but I'm not saying you should have your whole life figured out at 21. But, you know. Because I still don't even yeah. really technically know the end job I want, mm-hmm. but I know it's in a certain field, you know. Yeah, like you should you should point your arrow in a certain direction. Yeah, but you don't necessarily have to have have the destination fully, you know, fully in your mind quite yet. Um, yeah, I think that uh, that's kind of the way I was when I came to college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for <laughs> for some dumb reason, I chose electrical engineering mm-hmm. as my major because that's what my grandpa was. My grandpa's like genius. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I don't know, like how hard can it be? Yeah. And then I got a C in Calc one, and I was like, dude, I got to do something <laughs> different. And I, I mean, I slogged for that C too. Yeah. Like, I mean, I obviously I could have worked harder, you know, but uh, I was doing, I was doing a lot of drinking my freshman year. But um, yeah, it's like. Uh, and maybe it's one of the things where it's like, I don't want to work harder at this. This is not for me. This mm-hmm. is not what I enjoy. Um, you know, and luckily I found the construction management program through a fraternity brother. Um, you know, and I just, you know, I signed up for construction management 101 because um, I had dropped out of, or I dropped um, electrical engineering. Yeah. And uh, I I just started taking the UCOR classes. You know, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm just going to start taking requirements. Yeah. At least, you know, keep moving forward. Um, so I took CM 101 and I uh, ended up loving it. And mm-hmm. so it just, you know, it worked out. Um, so I'm, I'm glad, you know, I, I thought about, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll do finance, maybe I'll do economics, blah, blah, blah. And it's like all stuff that I'm really not interested in. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I didn't even know that CM, I didn't even know it was a degree. It yeah. just sort of worked out that way. Um, so that was nice. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, um, spend a lot of time searching for what they want to do. Yeah. Um, so I feel I feel pretty lucky that I just it sort of fell in my lap. Mm-hmm. I think so. To go back on what you said earlier, you said you're really hard on yourself, like a lot. And I know I know a lot of people can relate to that, and that's why I'm picking up on it because I've also been that person where I'm just like fuck, you know. And like like you said, you may you know tell me if I'm wrong, but like you said, you felt bad that you're changing jobs, right? Is that yeah. Like, yeah. So like, where do you think that fucking stems from? Because for me, I don't know where it would technically stem from me, but I know like I've, I'm trying to get to that attitude. Like, Hey, I need to take care of fucking me. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm the only one I'm going to die with myself. I'm going to live with myself my whole life. Might as well take care of me. Do you think it comes from an, a place of caring for others more than yourself sometimes? Yeah. I don't know. That's, I've never really thought about it mm-hmm. that way. Um, but I think that, you know, I think unjustly, you know, quote unquote millennials or whatever, get this bad rap that they're lazy or, are, uh, you know, entitled, which I think there's lazy and entitled people in every, in every generation, yeah. you know, but it's always old heads or, ah, you know, these kids these days. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like this sort of, uh, maybe <laughs> this protective instinct over, people our age, you know, they get a bad rap. So I, I, you know, I feel bad when it, when it, when I feel like somehow I'm maybe contributing to that. Um, well, I don't know what the word, what that perception yeah. of, uh, of people our age, you know, whether it's true or not. Um, you know, I was kind of talking to my, my grandma about it one time and she was talking about how, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Dennis Prager, mm-hmm. but I guess he, um, he's, He's like a conservative uh, journalist, but he also is a consultant. And I guess, you know, my grandma was saying, oh, you know, these companies have to bring him in as a consultant to teach them how to uh, deal with millennials. And it's like, d- is that, who is that saying more about? Is that saying more about people our age? Or is that saying more about older people being unable to adapt yeah. to people that live differently? Because I, you know, it's probably true for you too. I can't remember a time without the internet. Yeah. Right. I've had a smartphone since I was a sophomore in high school. Like, yeah, this stuff, um, you know, I'm not saying that's 
that technology is necessarily the reason for all this um, or for, you know, a change in the way people live. Um, but, uh, you know, I definitely, I mean, mass communication. Yeah. Like, look at this. You know, when this, doing a podcast, you can't, mm -hmm. this was impossible unless you were on the radio. And, yeah, 10 years ago, you couldn't even do this. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, the world is, is so much different and I don't know how you could expect people people to not be different right along with it mm -hmm. and i feel like people should adapt a little bit and learn to like because you know there was a point in sophomore year someone's hey, someone got you a smartphone or you paid you saved up for a smartphone this is how you this is it mm -hmm. and you go okay i'm gonna learn how to use this why isn't the older generation doing that you know yeah are we supposed to teach them or are they what where's the line what like when you hand someone a smartphone here is your fucking new tool of technology Back then, you know, they would hand them a car, you know, say like baby boomers back then. Here's your fucking 67 Chevy. And they would, you know what? They would figure out how to fix it. They would fi That stuff's way more complicated than picking up a fucking phone. So why aren't they picking up a smartphone and using that baby boomer brain they have? And they always like hit on ours. Like, I guess I'm ranting a little bit, but at what point is it like they're being ignorant to change? Yeah, I mean... I, I hate to sound like I'm ragging on yeah, me too. the generations that came before us because they did set us up pretty well. Yeah. I mean, like I look at my parents and they're, um, I think my, you know, my parents are, my mom is 56 and my dad's 55. So they're kind of like right in between, right. Between, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the world war two generation and, and then us. Um, so it's kind of, uh, you know, they're, my, my parents have always been really, um, sort of, or un I guess, yeah, understanding, or they just, you know, they've kind of been, been witness to the change, especially in the workforce. Uh, whereas my grandparents, you know, they, uh, you know, they've been retired since I was born. And, uh, but like my grandpa, my grandpa has a smartphone, my mm -hmm. grandpa has an iPhone, you know, um, and he uses it just fine. And, uh, you know, so he's not, he's not averse to technology, yeah. but, um, you know, I, th I think that, it, that people, it, you know, when it comes to criticism of people our age, kind of like want to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. You know, it's like, you guys are all this way because of this, mm -hmm. but then, you know, I'm going to update my status about what a bitch Becky was at work today. Yeah. You know, like, it's the, it's the same thing, you know, you're just, it's everybody's got their own perspective. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I, f I feel like I'm kind of going off on a weird tangent here. Um, oh, that's what it's for, man. Yeah. That's experience <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's got their own, their own thing, no matter how old they are. You know, there's, there's people, there's always been lazy people. There's lazy 50 year olds that, you know, lay on the couch and watch the Kardashians and, um, you know, or drain the system or whatever. And then there's, you know, 18 year olds that are out there grinding, you know, supporting a family or yeah. freaking getting ready for the NBA draft. Like that's, you know, that stuff isn't easy, man. Yeah. You know, it takes so much work, you know, it's like, I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, but like his body of work. Yeah. Like he is, he is the most talented basketball player. But at the same time, he works his fucking ass off. Yeah. You know, there, there's there's definitely been people that are probably close talent-wise to LeBron. Yeah. But, you know, there's just not willing to put the work in. Yep. You know, maybe, you know, maybe talent carried them through through uh, through high school and college. But then, um, you know, like anything else, man, you know, kids that are really smart in middle school and high school, they, you know, they get to college and then everybody else was smart in middle school and high school also and you know, for some people it's, they realize that and it makes them work harder. Yeah. And then some people withdraw and say, okay, you know, this isn't for me. Yeah. Um, when it is, yeah. you know, and sometimes it could be like, um, to be honest with you, I was kind of like, I was kind of like a good kid, smarter kid in high school and middle school. And then I got to college and basically college said, all right, you know, I got there and I was like, I'm pretty smart, you know? But then it's like you see these people and the, it, I could have went down two ways. You know, I could have said the exact same thing you said, let it motivate me, which is what I did. 
or I could just go, fuck this. This ain't for me. Yeah. And I think going through a better, you know, there's two wolves you could feed in life. You know, you could always feed the one that's negative or the one that's positive. And, you know, the hungry one's the negative one because it's easier to do. You know, a lot of people are, it's, I feel like social media, I hate to always be the guy I bring it to social media, but it's a big thing. A lot of people like to first complain about something because don't get me wrong. I complain on this podcast all the fucking time, but like, it's hard, It's easier to be like, fuck that person than go, oh, that person's probably having a rough day and maybe they're just being a shithead. Yeah. You know, but it's hard to think like that, you know? Yeah. I, I But I, I think that is one of the one things, you know kind of going back on what mm-hmm. I said about not wanting to, to criticize, you know, our generation, the things around us. But, um, well, I guess I should take that back because I think that anybody that's on social media doesn't, there's plenty of older people that are on social media, yeah. but like online arguments, right? Like people like how unhappy would somebody have to be to argue <laughs> in real life as much as they do online? Yeah. Right. Like, you know, fuck, I'm going to go check Twitter. You it's know, like slipping a switch. Yeah, type, type out a few angry messages to, you know, on a freaking feed about the Seahawks or something. You know, somebody's, well, we shouldn't have traded for Jadavion Clowney. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. But, you know, somebody, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, like, you know, in, like, how often would that happen in real life? Freaking never. People, yeah. you know, I think most people are, are, uh, non-confrontational you know in real life but then they get behind the computer screen and you know people call them keyboard warriors yeah you know and it's like man you ever look at a feed of like about something political on twitter it's like it's freaking it's fucked yeah up. it's disturbing man like you know and it goes from um you know a little little argument about the facts to you know it's because these people most people don't know what the fuck they're talking about you know, and fuck, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with most stuff. That's why I don't comment on yeah, random things. But then there's people, you know, arguing people they don't even know <laughs> on social media about something they have no, neither one of them has any idea about, right? Like, it's okay to have your position, but man, like, you know, calling calling people names and stuff on on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, it's just like, man, where did... Where do people get the time yeah. or the energy, man? Like <laughs> the amount of energy you have to expend to be that angry. I mean, I don't, I don't have it. No, it's not worth it too. And like, like you said, how mad do you have to be to get in an argument with someone in real life? Cause like, I feel like when there's an argument going on, say there was an argument going on upstairs, like how are, how mad do I have to be to get up and go actively participate in the argument? Yeah. You know, but like if this was Twitter, Oh, I'm in that instantly. You know, people, that's what they think. Like, they got to be, they got to voice their opinion because they have followers they have to maintain or something like that. Or they got to do the, I got them. Mm-hmm. You know, I roasted them. I'm like, did you really need to Chris, criticize that guy's mom? Like, wow, yeah. like, you got him, you know? And I feel like that's a big thing nowadays. It's like, I don't the know. The last word. It's like, you don't need the last word, you know? It's like, well, I fucking hate you. It's like, wow, man, ruin, ruin my day. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah, and you know that that other per, you know the person's waiting for the, them to respond like, "Come on, man, come yeah. on." <laughs> That's why you, know, you don't. Like, it's like if I'm going to be miserable, you're going to be miserable too. Yeah, you know, and it's it's kind of kind of sick, you yeah. know, in a way. Um, you know, and I think for for all the good that mass communication has done, mm-hmm. you know, like again, this this platform is it's cool, man. You can you know learn, you can. Um, see different cultures, different people, people that you would never even known existed a mm-hmm. few years ago. But at the same time, you know, like we were just talking about, that's, uh, you know, it opens the door for uh, for a lot of negativity. Um, but you can't you can't have uh, you can't you can't have one without the other. I guess yeah. it'd be nice if we could. Um, but I think you know, Joe Rogan brought up a good point about how. Um, I don't, he doesn't think that humans were ever designed to see the problems and the strife of 3 billion people. Oh, right. No, no way. And, you know, cause back in the day you, you only knew about the problems directly in front of you. You know, maybe your, your neighbor broke his leg or yeah, there's, you know, you see the poor people in your own town or, or whatever. But now you, you know, you see because of, you know, 24 hour news or, 
Facebook or whatever. I mean, it's like you see everybody's problems 24 hours a day. And it's, I, again, it's, I don't think it's healthy. No. Um, but it's like, you know, I'm, co- you know, you're going through your feed to, on one hand, you want to see what, you know, what Dom had for lunch, but then you also see, um, you know, there was a mass shooting in Florida or, you're, you know, whatnot. It's like, you know, it was, I wasn't, in the you're not scroll. prepared for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's like fucking freaky to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like I've never, I've never really thought about like, like that either. Like, Oh, what's Andy doing? Oh, he's on vacation. Two pages later, you're seeing 10 little kids get shot and you're like, this is like, I don't know how to feel right now. You know, like I'm, I'm happy for Randy that he's on vacation, but then you got to worry about these people who just fucking, you're like their families. And then, but yeah, going back to like that inner human of us. Yeah. Like we weren't trained for this, mm-hmm. you know, and it's crazy to think and that, but it's also cool to see a platform that provides this. Cause I bet you people who are my friends probably, you know, they're like, who's Andy. They've never even fucking heard of you. And now they, you know, people who are listening know your whole, your story, you know, your work story. Mm-hmm. And then maybe they can even apply it to that. And that's, what's cool about the platform. But then there's also stuff like, like the negative things you're like, you were saying. Yeah. And I think that there's, there's that, there's a thing about thinking maybe it's unnatural. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's people that are like, oh yeah, cities are unnatural, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, but you have to think like, I don't know, you know, maybe this is just part of our, the human evolution. Maybe, maybe this is all supposed to happen, whether, you know, whether you believe it's, it's God or if it's just the universe or whatever, you know, I don't know how you, how you say that anything is either supposed to happen or not supposed to happen. I don't, I don't know. How the fuck would I know? Yeah. You know, I think you can, you can waste your life away thinking about it too. And yeah. I'll try to avoid that. <laughs> Do you think a lot of people nowadays have a problem with always wanting to be right? Because they have a phone that could literally tell them anything they want now. I, I don't think that's necessarily unique to today. I think I think people just like to be right in general. Yeah. It's like that whole going back to the last word thing, you know. Yeah. Ha, gotcha. Yeah. It's just it's just now it all happens instantly. Like back in the day, if you wanted to prove somebody wrong, <laughs> like you had to work for it. You got to go to the library. You, you had you had to think how, how how worth it is being right. Yeah. You know, like. I don't know. Is it worth losing my freaking friendships over this argument? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I believe you that the moon's made of cheese. Let's go get a burger. Yeah. You know, but now it's like hot bullshit, you know? Yeah. Um, Ron White has a good bet about that. <laughs> um, about how back in the day, if, if you want to acknowledge the first thing person you asked was your mom. And if you didn't believe her, you had to go to the library. Yeah. And then, you, you know, it's like, uh, you had to go to the librarian and, <laughs> Say, you know, where's the knowledge that I seek? Oh, it's checked out already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, like you said, I mean, every every answer to most questions is at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, I mean, the internet's not always the most reliable thing, but for the most part, you can find out what you want to know. Pretty quick. Yeah. Like, if I'm in, a, like, I've been in arguments with just, you know, friends or something, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I think that person plays for this team. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, you know, and I'm like, oh, you know, I oh, guess you're right. Yeah, I guess yeah. you're right. Then we look it up and then we, we get over it. But then there's some people who are like, you know, like they just take it to heart. I'm like, hey, are you trying to like break this friendship just because you're not, you know, you're not right. I'm like, that shows a lot about you, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Not my good friends. Like those are people like at campus and shit. Dude, did. But uh, yeah, people, there are people who will do anything to protect their egos, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm not going to lie and say I'm immune to it totally. Um, but I mean, so, I mean, some people, they, uh, you know, they, their ego is what, what drives them. And, you know, for some people, that's a good thing. You know, they're yeah. not wanting to fail or, um, not wanting to people, th- not wanting people to think less of them or, or something, but then other people, their ego turns into an asshole. Yeah. Right. And it's like that whole thing again, got to be right. Got to have the last word. And that's their ego. And like, um, I think that, you know, for some people having Google is a learning tool for some people. It's oddly enough, it's a way to feed their ego. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's gross, but there's a line, you know, there's a line of good things that can happen with, with Google or without Google. 
I think in a lot of things that people do nowadays is just revolve to drive that ego in a good way. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's a good line, but yeah, God, man, this, it's crazy to think. And also like a body of work. That's another thing. Um, Joe Rogan and Jocko talk about, like, look at it in the body of work you've done. Yeah. Cause you know, like I bet you, you know, you look at your CM after your CM degree and what you've done. And it's hard to look at that full picture and say, well, wow, that's awesome. Because we're so focused on the, like the direct impact. Mm -hmm. So like right now, like with my podcast, you know, I look at the last three episodes most of the time because those are the ones I usually edit or like those. But then I look at it like last night I was looking at like the first episode of weekly take, which was last year. And it's so cool to look at what it's come to be and like what things I've learned. And I'm pretty sure it's the same way with your CM degree. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's the same way with people who learned how to fucking wax eyebrows you know you know yeah. <laughs> like their first eyebrow they ever waxed was different than the, the last one they just did yeah they were taking off full brows and now dude. now they're fixing up anthony davis yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude have you ever gotten your eyebrows done no dude but i got Fuck i have these God. retarded eyebrows like <laughs> so I, I have to like uh pluck my eyebrows between my eyes like every other day dude. really dude so bushy it's just freaking heinous <laughs> and uh but no but every, that's what everybody says dude you gotta should go get your eyebrows waxed or i did it dude fucking sucks it dude but they they look good for a while <laughs> thanks yeah <laughs> i mean but yeah they yeah they it hurts long term <laughs> tweezing is sucks too because these should, I, I could relate to that they fucking grow fast i gotta fucking tweeze all the time dude and it's it's hard too because i got i got pretty light hair mm -hmm. but my freaking my eyebrows are like jet black <laughs> and I get, <laughs> sorry, I get these, I, I get these hairs that are like freaking copper wire and they like, they'll like barely poke out from between, like between my eyes and I have to like get my tweezers and like stick them in my skin and just freaking <laughs> torque down on it and yank it out. And it's like, but it, I, I don't know why it's like, it matters to me so much. Yeah. But it's like it bothers the shit out of yeah. me. Or like, you know, I'll be sitting there at my desk and I'll rub between my eyes, like scratch where I'm like, and I can feel it. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, and if like I a if, steel wool brush. <laughs> dude, if, like I'm, if I'm by myself in the office or whatever, I'll kind of take a quick peek, bust out my Leatherman, and I'll pull it out with my <laughs> fucking needle nose pliers. <laughs> Bro, I fucking, I remember I had a thick, oh, dude, I pulled one out. I swear to God, the root, there's like a root on it. Like, you know, that's, you know, every hair has like yeah. a follicle or whatever. But dude, the fucking root. I swear to God, was I know exactly dead. what you yeah. mean. <laughs> like I was like, that was in my skin, and I pulled it out. <laughs> it's fucking that, dude. Hair is fucking weird, dude. Like, I never really thought about hair, but think about that shit. Like, it's weird. Yeah, dude. It's um, like I'm not a very hairy person, but mm -hmm. like, so I've never really had hair on my arms. Me either. But like, my legs have hair though. Yeah, same. But uh, dude, I started growing hair on my back. And Fuck. all I can, and all, whenever I, you know, when I, whenever I find a back hair, all I think is like some fat dude from the seventies in a, on, at the beach in a speedo, like drinking a church key Miller light. Like I was like, I can't be that guy. Yeah. So I'm like freaking sitting there trying to get all my back hairs, you Just know, I, no, I'll get like two or three, like one here, one there, but I'm like freaking out. I don't know. I don't know why it bothers me so fucking much. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting back hairs yet. <laughs> But dude, I saw a guy went to go get my hair cut and um this guy had fucking hair on his shoulder. I swear to god you could have braided it. Dude, ugh. it's fucking nasty. And I guess some people are cool with it. Yeah. I was like, how are you I feel like it would feel weird. Like, dude, it looked like a like a bush, like pubes on his back, <laughs> but it was long enough to braid. Dude, that's like I would say long is probably your hair. Yeah. It was like long hair. Yeah, I'm reach I'm reaching the the You're max. This is this is about as, as long as I'll let it get anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'll usually let it grow long in the winter because I don't I don't like to wear under anything under my hard hat. Like some people wear a beanie under their hard hat. Um, I don't, so I'll let my hair grow long, so it kind of keeps me a little bit warmer. Um, and then usually in the summer, um, I'll cut it real short. And, yeah, for the opposite reason. Um, but yeah, I just. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of lazy about weird things and haircuts are one of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm usually like a twice a year haircut guy. Mm -hmm. um, you like not just spending the money on it? Is that what it is? No, I spend money on all kinds of stupid yeah. shit. Like, <laughs> like haircuts are important, but <laughs> no, I just, I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm going to go get my haircut this day at this time. And I'm like, Meh. Oh, you just tweeze it with your tweezers, right? Y yeah. Just one, <laughs> one at a time, man. Until I'm completely bald. 
God, could you, you imagine? <laughs> dude, that would be a torture chamber right there. It's like, all right, we're going to tweeze every hair off your fucking body. Dude, I guarantee you there's some crazy fuck on the internet that's done it, though. There's, yeah, there is. And I bet you there's a crazy person who'd watch and get off to it. Dude, no, no shit. <laughs> People will get off to anything. That's fuck. That's weird, too. You, th- you look at it, you look up, like, I think it's called F12 or something. Of it, or something. Mm-hmm. It's like the law or, like, the idea that s- somebody has a fetish for it. Yeah. So, like, a car people would there's probably people out there who like get off to like people cars. jerking off the piles of old tires <laughs> yeah like dude it's fucking weird i mean i, I i'm safe to, i think i'm safe to say that i don't, I don't have any weird anything weird and i'm yeah, glad fuck i don't have any that i know about yet <laughs> like fuck i could turn maybe when turn i'm 50 30 or yeah and just freak the fuck out but maybe the curve of a tire will get me <laughs> going with- <laughs> Ooh, man no, but uh, I don't know. You, you ever heard of Sebastian Maniscalco? What? What's that? He's a comedian. Uh-uh. Uh, he had, well, he had a bit about about people's fetishes. Um, and he's saying that, you know, it's all, it's, it's the internet's fault. Like, mm-hmm. back in the day, if you were a grown man and you liked to dress up as a baby, you did it in the privacy of your own basement because you thought you were the only person yeah. in the world that was into now it. Yeah, you could find. Yeah, now with the internet, you can find, you know, whoever's into your weird thing, you can find them on the internet. Yep. And now there's, there's like, now there's you and 400 of your friends at the Hilton on a Saturday dressed up as babies. <laughs> and it's like, fuck, that's fucking true. That's a good bit, man. Dude, I fucking love stand-up comedy. Yeah. Have you ever seen Workaholics? Sorry, say that again? You've ever seen Workaholics, the show? Yeah. Yeah, I work for um, Eric Griffin. So, you know, Montez? Yeah. I edit for his podcast. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, I do. I help him with his Instagram micro content and stuff. So like his postings, but dude, I like just seeing him, like he's a huge motivation to like, and he has a podcast as well. It's really cool to see standup comedy. Cause I mm-hmm. think, I think podcasts are a really good thing for standup comedy and co- uh, podcasts are like two. Cause it gives you, it's a creative aspect and you, I think stand-up com- comedians do great in podcasts. I think that's another reason why Joe Rogan does so great. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, like I, 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 I don't think I could ever do performance art. You know, I have stage fright or whatever. It's mm-hmm. just you know, it's not really my thing. But I, um, yeah, but, but like I really admire people that you know get up on stage and, yeah. um, and do that kind of stuff. Like you. You know, you open yourself up to being, to being judged. Easy. Yeah, but you're like, you know, you, you find that self confidence or whatever, and and you get up there and you tell your jokes, or you know, maybe people laugh, maybe they don't, and then going back that same thing. Like some people, they say, oh, I suck at comedy. Like I'm not going to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Or I, I suck at playing music. I'm not a good rapper. Whatever. You know, so they quit. But then some people are like, you know, had a bad set. You know, people didn't like my song, and that's the only solution is to work harder. Yeah. How can I make them like it? Yeah. What can I do? And that's what I'm trying to get to. Cause there's this other, I believe in this thing too. Like 90% of people who no, it's t- the 10, per- 90% of the people who quit work for the 10% who didn't. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that kind of keeps me going too. Cause you know, all the people who wanted to do it and realize like, Oh, it's fucking hard. Like I bet you there's people who were in your construction management class who said, fuck this, this is hard. And they could have totally done it. Yeah. But like you said, I love it. I dig it and I'm going to stay with it. And, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, they're applying to work for you or something, you know? So it's just, I try to think of it in that light sometimes, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of good things in them. And it's just when you don't give up, you know? And and I think even with this podcast too, I put myself out there too for people to get butt hurt. Because mm-hmm. there's some things like, I guarantee you, like people who just heard us talking about fetishes, like, oh my god, how could they talk about that? You know, yeah. But like, who the f- like? I'm at that point now where I'm like, who the fuck cares? Like, this is my creative outlook. This is our experience. This is our conversation. Why should I worry about any what anyone else thinks? But yeah. I'm not saying like I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna kill someone. You know? No, no, I know you exactly know. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, at at some point you have to, you know, if especially with probably something like comedy, like I, I can only imagine that at some point you have to kind of. You know, you can change and evolve or whatever, but at some point you got to double down and kind of decide, you know, whether you're going to be Joe Rogan and tell like laid back yep. sort of like, I don't know, I, I, you almost say he's like almost like an intellectual comic mm-hmm. or you could be Joey Diaz, you know, where you yeah. just freaking, you know, say the raunchiest shit you can and, you know, because people are, there's people that like both. There's people that like one or the other. Yeah. But at, at some point, you know, you have to, you have to kind of stick to your guns and. 
you know, I think, theme. yeah, comedy is just an example of that. Um, but I think that's probably true in, in all aspects. I guess, you know, trying to re- relating that to constructions, I remember um, kind of my mentor at my previous company, um, was, you know, my, one of my goals is to become a superintendent and uh, of a school. No, 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 of, of a construction oh, okay. site. And uh, being a superintendent of a school wouldn't be that bad yeah. either, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, he was always saying, like, you you have to you have to decide what kind of superintendent you want to be. You know, if you're going to be a yeller, that's fine. But you have you be can't ever yeller. take that mask off, right? You Or I mean, mask is not – you can't ever shut that off, right? Yeah. If you're, you're an intense yeller, you have to be intense. You have to yell all the time. You can't ever um, – for, for the sake of the people that work for you, you can't ever shut that off, right? Yeah. You, they can't – the people that work for you, you don't want them to be surprised by how you're acting. Yeah. Um, or if you're going to – if you're a calm, you know, if you're a resolved guy, you can't ever – not that you can't be stressed or or be overwhelmed, but you can't you can't let the people that work for you sh- – you, you can't let them see that. Yeah. Right? You have to be the same, like, level-headed – um, e- you know, easygoing guy. Maybe not easygoing, but you have to be level-headed. You have to, you have to keep exuding that confidence, or else. Because if you show instability, you know, then the people that work for you, you know, it results in instability in your crew. Yeah. Right. And it's not exactly the same, but I think it's sort of that whole thing about at some point you choose your identity. Yeah. Um, and at least to a certain extent, you do. You kind of have to stick to it. Yeah, it's like to even go, you know, when you're young, you know, you're you're like I'm going I'm a dude and then you identify as a dude mm-hmm. or whatever you identify with and then that kind of sticks with you and then everything else kind of piles on top of it. That also applies with coaching too, like football coaches. Like 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 your boss said, be a yeller, you could be a yeller or you could be like a player coach where you're like the good guy, the mm-hmm. good cop kind of guy or you're going to have to be the hard hard ass. It's like yeah, like the inconsistencies show, and then everyone's like, oh, he's just being an ass today. He'll be fine tomorrow. We'll get away with it tomorrow. Yeah. And you never want that, especially in a workforce, and especially when you're doing things like, like you said, what, light, uh, light real estate you guys were working mm-hmm. on? Like, if someone says, oh, we'll get back to it tomorrow, they forget, and then that someone gets hurt from it. Like, that's not fucking cool. Yeah, you no, know? for sure. And that all stems from, like, not being your true self a little bit. No, that's a, that's a really good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I've, I've never really thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the other, the other big thing is, um, you know, if you, if you're a quiet guy and you have a big blow up or you're a yeller and then you get, you Humble. know, yeah, I think some, you know, people maybe will, will think that that's coming from a place of insincerity. Yeah. Um, whether or not it really is, you know, you might, you might be a yeller and you might one day decide that, um, you know, oh, I want to start calming down. I got hypertension or whatever. You know, it's kind of, it's too late, you know, for, you could maybe go to another company or go, go get another yeah. crew of people that really don't know you. Um, but yeah, once, once that switch is on, it's pretty, turning it off is, is, uh, you know, at least for the people around you, it, 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 like I said, yeah, it's just, uh, it show it's instability. It's, you know, uh, I don't know if chaos is the word, but yeah, um, you know the was it Jordan Peterson always says, you know, that <clears throat> any anything you don't know is chaos. Yeah, that's what we think sometimes, mm-hmm. and you know, and and also it's like it's also interesting to me too. Everything I don't know, I'm like, wow, this is fucking, this is cool. Jordan Peterson's one of those guys who's he's fucking badass, but yeah, um, I would I would look at. His when he was on Theo's podcast, he was a fucking awesome person. Oh, what up, Brendan? You're in front of the camera, Brendan. Yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah you're also. Uh, your uh, country you're music was pretty loud too. What? Your country music upstairs was pretty uh, interesting too. No, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, Jordan Peterson, man, he's. Uh, that's a that's another level of of smart. Yeah. Like. His his ability to to analyze people and analyze the world around him is freaking freaking crazy. Have you watched his lectures online? Yeah. Dude, he's fucking badass. He talks he talks some relationship stuff too. Mm-hmm. And that's where I usually stem with finding people to be honest with you like I'll look up like relationship advice 
or something like that. And he'll be like, dude, this is what you should do. Or this is what an alpha male would do. Or this is how people would think in prehistoric times. And I was like, how can I apply that to my life? So that's why I did the flip phone thing where I had a flip phone all week. I had like, I bought, went and bought a prepaid flip phone and it helped me like be more consistent. Like when I'm at school, like I wasn't on my phone, on my Snapchat, fucking goofing around like an idiot. Yeah. Because I have a flip phone. I gave my mom, my brother, my number, and then these guys, my number. Yeah. And I said, if you guys need to get a hold of me, just call me. But this way I'll, I'll come on my phone when I'm, you know, here and I'm done with work. But it kind of let me be in that realm of what people were in. It was really, really nice, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You should try it out sometime. I'm pretty sure you did, though, prior. You know, everyone's done it. Everyone had a flip phone at some time. Yeah. No, I think that's that's a good idea. I think I'll try that. Yeah. Because uh, I think, you know, again, going back to that whole thing about social media, it can be fucking exhausting. Yeah. You know, I think about even me, like, I'm not super techie. Like, my big hobby is fishing. Like, so it's I have an outdoor hobby. But at the same time, like, I spend a lot of time on my fucking phone. Yeah. Like, way more than I should. You know, and it's, I think that'd be, that'd be a really good idea to kind of detox for, try it out for a week and just, um, you know, I have a smartphone at work that it's not really optional, but I, I only have to be on it when I'm at work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. Man. You should do it and then call in. I have, I have a voicemail now on my podcast. Okay. So like now if you do it, yeah, call in and be like, yo, Dom, I fucking, I did it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. But yeah, man, we're approaching the hour mark. I don't know how much longer you you got to go if you got to get ready. Yeah, we're getting pretty close to beer okay. 30 here. Well, let's fucking wrap it up, bro. So this is my good friend Andy. Is What What else? Where Where can people find you, man? Um, Really, the only the only social media I'm really active on is, well, sort of, is uh, is Instagram. And mm-hmm. I'm grand underscore puba, P-U-B-A 94. Okay. Um, And then I think Snapchat is just... uh. Andy Vavroshek, V A V R O U S E K, but uh, yeah, I don't really. Facebook is, you know, like most people, I yeah. don't really use it anymore. I use it for just messaging people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, no, it looks like I might be off social media for a little bit when I uh, when I do the flip phone thing, though. Yeah, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, dude, try it out, man. It's good. It's it's fun. You really get. I mean, I found out. I I I got a lot of shit done. I believe it. And it was also, it was nice too. Cause like, dude, just keep, tr- just today, keep track of how many times you pick up your phone. Yeah. Like count it in your head mentally. And I'm not trying to say smartphones are bad cause they're great. But like I use them for bad reasons to like distract myself or procrastinate a lot. Exactly. So like, you know, every, the Xbox is the same way, you know, but yeah. So again, guys, this has been episode 20 with my good friend, Andy Vavrashek. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. So check him out on all the social medias and thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you.